It is here where you'll find the best marriage counselor, greatest healer, wisest teacher, and closest friend. I need your grace. I need your favor. I need your mercy. I need a savior. Pax Christi Multimedia presents On Fire, Powerful Preaching of the Word of God. Welcome to On Fire, your Catholic TV show today. My name is Father Ramon DeCon. I'm the pastor of Cristo Rey Catholic Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Today we explore a little new, um, a, a new uh, uh, topic today. We're diving into how to strengthen your spiritual life. And in particular, we're gonna be looking at the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola and the Ignatian spirituality. Uh, today, to begin our day today, let's read and listen to a passage uh, from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Now someone approached him and said, Teacher, what good must I do to, again, to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have kept, I have observed, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we reflect upon the spirituality of St. Ignatius of Loyola. A little brief summary of his life. When he was born, he was born in the northern part of Spain, which is right along the border with France. The Pyrenees are right in that area, if you like geography. And when he grew up, he grew up not speaking Spanish, but he grew, grew up speaking the local language, not a, too much unlike the Basque language of the time. Uh, he grew up in a family that was of noble birth, and he had a good life growing up. He dreamed about big things happening to his, his life. He wanted to be a soldier, and he wanted to have the honors of being a nobleman. He dreamt about conquering lands and being held in high esteem and having fine things and luxurious things. And so he joined the local military group, and he went into battles. And as much as he went into battles, he eventually began to grow in, in the ranks. And as he kind of grew through the ranks, he began to realize that, you know, this is something that he really wanted to do, so he thought. One day, however, he was severely injured by a cannonball that broke one of his legs and injured the other leg, so much so that he was, had to convalesce in a hospital for quite some time. Immobile, he asked for reading books, especially books of chivalry, because that inspired him. As he went through them, he read them, he felt so inspired, so to speak, for that moment. But then he found that eventually, after he finished reading it, he felt very low. And he couldn't figure out why. Why was he feeling so low after reading these wonderful acts and, and these chivalrous uh, behaviors that he thought should inspire him? But as time went by, he began to realize that he needed something more. So he looked for more books, and no books came, and then finally a sister brought some books. Not books of chivalry, but books of the life of Jesus. And he began to read those, and he began to read the books of the life of the saints. Now something was different for these books that he read. Not only was, not only was he inspired by the lives of these saints and the life of Jesus, but at the end when he finished, he began to ask himself, what if I were to be like that? 
What if I were to be like one of the saints? And eventually, great things happened to him. He had a conversion of heart, and he abandoned his past life, and he became a follower of Jesus. And he embraced the life of sacrifice for love of God. I want to read a passage here. A, actually, it's a, a prayer. This is the most famous prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And what we find in this beautiful prayer is encapsulated within it is the spirituality of a disciple of Christ, a true disciple of Christ. It also encapsulates within it the spirituality of St. Ignatius that has inspired tens of thousands of people over the years. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. All that I have and possess, thou hast given all to me. To thee, O Lord, I return it. All is thine. Dispose of it wholly according to thy will. Give me thy love and thy grace, for this is sufficient for me. What a beautiful prayer. A complete surrender of one's heart, of oneself to God. And this is what happens when we truly embrace the life of a disciple, is we give ourselves completely over to the Lord. So that in good times or bad, we are faithful to the Lord. And so it should serve to inspire us. No matter what challenges you face in your life, turn to the Lord. Let Him guide you. Let Him be the one who steers the ship of your life. Let him be the one that is your strong, firm anchor in difficult times. Let him be the one to get you through the challenges of life. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be crosses. Jesus never told us that everything would be easy. In fact, he told us that we need to take up our cross and follow him. That there would be suffering to come. It's so true, isn't it? Think about all the apostles. Of the 12 apostles, uh, 11 of them died a martyr's death. They died for their faith. They suffered. And even the 12 went through great suffering himself. So what does that say to us? That says, says we need to expect the crosses and embrace the crosses out of love for the Lord. The spirituality of St. Ignatius of Loyola is a wonderful model for us in our life. I'd like to briefly explain a little bit this beautiful spirituality that can help you through the good times and through the bad times. And what I mean by going through the good times is sometimes when we things are going good, it's real easy to be a disciple, right? And sometimes things are so good that we put our guard down. We got to be careful. Don't put your guard down because that's when Satan's going to come in. Have confidence in Jesus. Look to him for guidance even in the good times, and thank him for those good times. Let's look for a few minutes, let's reflect for a minute upon the spirituality of St. Ignatius of Loyola. First of all, the spirituality of St. Ignatius of Loyola is a model of prayer. It's also a model of how God calls us in a special way to give of ourselves out of love for him and to accept the challenges and accept the joys. Everything that we do, we accept out of love for the Lord. It's also a safeguard against pride. You notice when good things happen uh, to people, sometimes pride can take over them and can distort their ver- ver- their vision of themselves, of their own self-importance. It can also cause us to think that we are uh, more than we are. We're all that, as some, te- some teenagers say. The reality here is this, is that we are called to be servants of the Lord. And what a wonderful example we have in in, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. What a wonderful example we have. The Blessed Virgin Mary gave of herself completely, and she expressed this in her fiat, in her, let your will be done. I am the servant, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done unto me according to thy word, Lord. Complete surrender that we hear in the life of of, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And what a wonderful example for us. The spirituality of St. Ignatius of Loyola also asks us to make an examination of conscience and really to see who we are for ourselves, 
First, we see how our sins, what our sins are. And that inspires, that, that, that moves us to have repentance for our sins, to see how our sins have affected other people, have affected our relationship with God, have been an offense to God. That moves us to repentance, to sadness, to uh, a true conversion, moves us to conversion. And so we are called in a special way today to see that even through the sins that we have, God can move us towards something greater. Our sins destroy our relationship with God if they continue in our lives. And so, in a special way, we are called in a special way to see that our sins have such a negative effect upon our life. We need to root those out, root out those sins from our life. And when we see that, we know that also God is not giving up on us. He never gives up on His children. He's there to help us through it all. So no matter what we do, when we come to him with a sorrowful, repentant heart, he forgives us. It's like the story of the prodigal son. We sin against God, but God the Father welcomes us back out of love for us. What great mercy God has for us and how blessed we are too. You think about that? God is so good. That should move us to tears. That should move us to fill our churches every day to worship Him in Eucharistic adoration, to give our hearts out of love to Him each and every day. Sometimes, however, we have this feeling of desolation. After consolation, we have desolation sometimes. We be, feel consoled after we're repentant, and then sometimes we feel this sense of desolation, this sense of emptiness. But it's a reminder to us that we need to steady it, stay strong, don't make any rash decisions at this time in our life. When we are emotionally caught up in something, when bad things happen to you, when you're doing the right thing, don't give up on following what God's will is for you in your life. Don't throw in the towel. Stay firm. Persevere. I had a spiritual director, an old Jesuit uh, back in college, and I would come to him and I was just emotionally drained and exhausted and fatigued spiritually. I was going through discerning what God wanted me to be when I grew up, if he wanted me to become a priest or what. So eventually, as I kind of walked, or as I kind of walked the path of being a disciple of Christ, I, I would pass by his office and I'd go in and I'd talk to him regularly. Once a week I'd go in and I felt such desolation at times. But he, he would always end our conversation with this word, persevere, persevere. That word perseverance means that we move forward even when it's hard, when it's difficult. It's like an athlete. Think about an athlete for a minute. If an athlete gives up the first time he starts feeling pain, when he has that ache in his hamstring or he feels that pain in his shoulder, if he gives up right away and says, oh, this is too hard, he's not persevering. He's never going to become stronger. On the other hand, the man who, or the athlete who goes through those challenges, who works through them and pushes his body, he becomes stronger and faster. Wow! That's what we are as spiritual athletes of the Lord. Let's turn to the Lord now and open our heart to the Lord. We're about to go into our second, uh, uh, second part of today's uh, preaching. Uh, something, some questions to ask yourself. How can I open my heart more to the Lord? Number two, am I humble in the way I look to the Lord? Do I look to Him for guidance? And number three, how can I grow in my prayer life to open my heart more fully to the Lord? We'll see you in a few minutes. See you back. God bless you. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, 
you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. Welcome back to On Fire, powerful preaching of the Word of God. Today, in today's episode, my name is Father Ramon de Khan. I'm the pastor of Cristo Rey Catholic Church. Today, we reflect upon the spirituality of St. Ignatius of Loyola. He was born in 1491, and during his life, he showed a tremendous uh, growth in his own spiritual life through some difficult times. He gives us an example of how to turn away from sin and to embrace the love of Jesus in our lives, to embrace his mercy. Today, we were just to, to review, we reviewed uh, the several steps of Ignatian spirituality. Uh, we first examined our conscience to know our sins, to know how we have hurt our relationship with God, how we have hurt our other people as well, and the effects that our sins have on other people. That moves us to a deeper understanding of our own sins, and therefore a greater repentance, a greater sense of, of contrition for what we've done. And this moves us then to have great consolation in knowing Jesus Christ is merciful and to embracing that mercy. And so, however, sometimes we will experience desolation. Sometimes we will experience that sense of dryness, spiritual dryness in our life. And sometimes we will feel such pain and suffering in our life that we're not sure where to turn. St. Ignatius gives us advice. He says, don't make any rash judgments. Don't make any rash changes in your life. Steady the boat. Stay strong. Persevere in the Lord. Because when we begin to persevere in the Lord, we begin to grow in our faith and trust in Him. It's easy to trust when everything's going great, right? It's, 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 it's a piece of cake. But when things go bad, how do we turn? What, where do we turn? What do we do? Jesus calls us in a special way to stay with him, to stay strong. I'm, re I'm reminded of Peter. You remember when Peter was on the boat and Jesus came walking to him on the water? And then he called out to Peter and, and said, uh, Peter, go ahead, walk. Peter wanted to, if it really is you, Jesus, Peter said, call me. And he did. And Peter began to walk on the water, but then he saw the wind and the waves and bad things were happening and he got nervous and he began to lose faith in God. Sometimes that's the way we are. When bad things happen to us, we start out strong. When everything's going great, we trust a little bit. Jesus wants us to trust completely. And so that's why that prayer, that, in, that uh, surrender to the Lord that we read earlier is so important. It's a complete surrender to the Lord. Because then when we do that, we really begin to give of ourselves completely as a good disciple should. We're also reminded today that in the times of consolation, uh, when, those when that uh, desolation comes into our lives, that we need to reflect upon that consolation and remind, remind ourselves that the desolation will pass. It's not the end of the world. You know, when you're in the midst of a storm, sometimes you, you forget that that storm is going to end. It's going to end. It will pass. And so we have to look to the Lord. We have, to we have to really trust in Him through prayer, offering our heart, the depths of our heart to the Lord. Today, I'd also, also like to reflect upon uh, how the Lord calls us in a special way to move forward. Not just to stand still, but to move forward in our spiritual life. Sometimes we settle for just being okay in our relationship with God. We're called to be excellent, to give ourselves completely to the Lord. That passage that I read earlier from the Gospel of John that talks about the young rich man, uh, he was a good man, pretty good man, did pretty good things, he kept all the commandments since he was young. But Jesus says, I want you to give everything. I want you to be perfect. I want you to give yourself completely to me. Don't go halfway in. Don't like touch the water and say, oh, okay, well, I touched the water. No, both feet in, completely in giving yourself completely to the Lord. That's where faith really begins to grow, when you give yourself completely to the Lord through prayer and sacrifice. One of the pillars of Ignatian spirituality are the 14 rules of discernment of spirits. What is that? Well, St. Ignatius, who wrote these 14 rules, gives us a 
map of how to follow the Lord through difficulties in life and how to discern if it's from God or if it's from the evil one or from our own desires, our own fallen brokenness. And so each one of the rules helps us to understand a little bit more about human nature, about our weakened human nature, also about how God keeps moving us and keeps challenging us in our life with Him. The first, the, these, these 14 rules uh, go through our own weakness. For example, uh, the first rule talks about those who are saturated with sin, or basically they have uh, committed a mortal sin and are living in that mortal sin, living in that sin that has damaged, destroyed their relationship with God. And so we call it mortal sin because it comes from death, muerto, which means death, mors mortis, if you're from, familiar with Latin. It kills, it kills. And so we need to separate ourselves completely from that sin in order to move forward in our relationship with God. That can be one of the most difficult things that a person ever does. Uh, sometimes our sins are so attached to us that sometimes we don't even know that they're there. And so a good examination of conscience, a humble examination of conscience with even the help of a good spiritual director can help you to uncover those sins. But even if you have discovered those sins, those mortal sins, sometimes you need that extra grace. You need that extra grace to separate yourself from that sin. Because if you don't separate yourself from that mortal sin, then it's really hard to see the Lord because you're so far from Him. I wear glasses, as you can tell. Uh, I started wearing them when I was about eight years old. But right now, if I take my glasses off, I can't see very well. I just can't. But if I put them back on, wow, a whole nother world comes clear. I can see people. I can see myself. I'm not going to trip. It's the same way with mortal sin. When mortal sin comes into our lives, we can't see very well. But once that mask, that, that sin is taken of our life, we can see a lot clearer. So the first step is removing that sin from our life. Sometimes there are those who maybe not living in mortal sin, but they're also, they're just struggling. They have sincere desires and sincere wills, but they struggle and so they fatigue and so the temptation is to give up. Jesus says, don't give up. Persevere. Carry that cross out of love for me. You know, think about Jesus Christ. If Jesus is the Son of God and he's, even He suffered, what makes us think that we're not going to suffer too? In fact, Jesus says, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Amazing. Amazing that we have to carry that cross, but at the same time, amazing grace too. Amazing grace. God gives us that grace to help us through it all, to challenge us, to help us to become that disciple out of love for the Lord. When we embrace His grace, when we embrace His mercy, God does His work. We just let Him do His work. And what a wonderful way to live, to completely surrender one's life to the Lord. Say, it's not mine, it's yours. Uh, John the 23rd, Pope John the 23rd, St. John the 23rd, he's quoted as saying uh, at, uh, before he would go to bed uh, that he was reflecting upon all the different uh, challenges that he was faced with in his daily life. And uh, uh, after reflecting upon it, he, he said something like this. He said, uh, uh, God, it's your church. I'm going to bed. What a beautiful way of surrendering to the Lord for the Pope. Uh, he was known as a, being a joyful, happy uh, Pope with a great sense of humor. And it's very true. We've got to have a good sense of humor to give of ourselves completely to the Lord and to keep things in perspective. It's important. If we don't keep things into perspective, then we're more likely to go over one, one, one cliff or the other cliff. We keep it in perspective and let the Lord guide us in our daily life. The, the seven, excuse me, the 14 rules of, of uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola, of discerning spirits, helps us to persevere through the challenges of life. If we have challenges in our life, we need to realize that the Lord is there to help us through it all. And what a wonderful way to, to give of ourselves to the Lord through the Eucharist. St. Ignatius of Loyola was a man of the Eucharist and a man who loved the Lord. In fact, the Anima Christi, some of you know that prayer, the Anima Christi is a wonderful example of 
giving of ourselves to the Lord and asking Jesus to come into our lives and asking His, her blessed, His blessed Virgin Mary, our Blessed Mother Mary, to help us through the challenges of life. And so when we give of ourselves to the Lord in the Eucharist, when we offer our heart and mind to the Lord during the Mass on Sunday or any day of the week, we open ourselves to His grace. We open ourselves to His mercy and His love. We open ourselves to Jesus Himself. How blessed we are, how blessed we are to have this faith that St. Ignatius shared with us in his own life, in the way he lived his life, and through his writings. His writings are a reflection of God's great mercy for us in our own life. I'd like to reflect for a moment upon uh, some challenges that you might be faced with. Maybe you're faced with challenges in your own life that seem unbearable. Maybe you're at the point of throwing in the towel. Don't give up. Don't give up. Turn to the Lord. The merciful Lord is there to help you through it all. He never abandons his sheep, and you are one of them. If you're baptized, you've received his grace. You've become incorporated into the body of Christ, into the body of Christ, into the family of God, and you are his son, his daughter. So do not fatigue. Do not give up. Persevere in the challenges of your life. Maybe you're faced with a son or daughter who's left the practice of the faith. Maybe they're doing things in their moral life that are just so uh, offensive to you and so insulting to what you taught them to be. Don't give up. Share God's love with them by the way you're living your faith. Your joy, your love goes a long way can go a long way to help them in their own life. Sometimes as a parent, one of the most difficult things is to see your son do some things that you know you didn't teach him to do. Turn to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Another wonderful person to turn to is Saint Monica. Saint Monica is a wonderful example, example for parents that are going through hard times with their sons, they had, or their, their children for that matter. Uh, Saint Monica had his son. And his name was Augustine. And many of you know Augustine, the life of Augustine. Augustine lived a life that was so separated from what his mother taught him. And she scolded him first, but then as he grew up, she just tried to motivate him, tried to get him to think and to really embrace the Lord. So this is the challenge for us today, to embrace the path of Jesus. Let's offer these things in prayer today. Heavenly and merciful Father, we ask you in a special way to watch over all of those who are watching and listening today. Help them to open their hearts out of love for you. Help them to see that you do not abandon them, that you are here to help them through the challenges of their life. Help them to know that you are their rock, their foundation. You are there to help them through it all. Help them to know that through the challenges of life, they can grow in holiness. They can grow in faith. Help them to persevere and give themselves out of love for you, accepting the good and the bad out of love for you, accepting the challenges and the joys, recognizing that you help them through it all. Help them to not give up. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.